So today I'm going to talk about prototyping an API backend using AWS. So this is something that uh, I've been working on. Uh, I won't claim to be completely successful, but uh, it's also something that uh, I used to work for a company here in town called Cha Cha Search. And um, one of the things that we tried to do at Cha Cha was to uh, deploy our question and answer platform in a way that other companies could take advantage of it. Uh, unfortunately, at that time, there was nothing like uh, AWS uh, API gateway available to us. So we ended up uh, having to build a lot of this ourselves. So this is an interesting experience for me so far. So the first question is, why would we want to create an API? Uh, how many of you guys are service companies? I know PackSafe is a service company. Um, so if you have a service, uh, there may be lots of people who want to access your service, but you'd like to be able to have them access it in a controlled way. You'd like to know who's doing what with your system, and you'd like to be able to have a nice standardized interface. So a REST API lets you have a clear separation of control between front-end developers who might in fact be your customer and the back end of the system. Uh, in addition to that, the API will allow you to have limited and metered usage of a resource. So you don't have to worry that you expose the API out there somewhere and people start hitting you hundreds or thousands of times in an hour and are just bogging down your system and you can't figure out why. Um, multiple users of the same API can use a common set of definitions. Uh, in addition to that, as we'll see a little bit later, API Gateway lets you implement different versions of your service which have different uh, endpoints and different stages so that if you want to have different customers using different features or you'd like to have a, uh, a dev environment, a testing environment, and a production environment, you can set all of those up within API Gateway. Uh, last but certainly not least is that, um, and this was one of the things that we really would have liked to have been able to do at ChaCha was to create an SDK so that uh, depending on which platform your customer is using, you can build an SDK that they can install uh, in iOS or in Android or in JavaScript, which will allow them to call your functions as native functions. Makes the interaction much easier and hopefully makes their task easier. So why would we choose AWS? First reason we would choose AWS is because through the API gateway, we can access any and all of the existing AWS services. So you don't need to worry about user authentication. You don't need to worry about building uh, your own API keys. You don't need to worry about um, building the uh, ability for your customer to look at how much he's using of your service, uh, what he's going to be paying, uh, how many people are accessing which features. Uh, in addition to that, the API gateway makes prototyping easy. As we'll see in a few minutes, um, the API gateway allows you to essentially uh, customize the four inputs and outputs of your uh, API for each individual uh, resource that you expose uh, through the API. Uh, in addition to that, you can make incremental uh, changes to your API. If you have a new service that you'd like to either test or you'd like to uh, expose to a limited number of your customers, you can set up a separate stage of the API which will allow them to access that through a different URL and you can find out you know, uh, what's going on with that new service without taking all of your other users offline when you do that. Um, API Gateway supports multiple language options. You can uh, build a completely serverless system where you don't have to worry about mm, anything that uh, is on the back end, which uses Lambda functions, but you can also write in Python, Node.js, so anyone who's a developer 
doesn't need to learn a new tool set in order to use API Gateway. Um, API Gateway also supports a scalable approach so that you don't have to build uh, a lot, you don't have to buy a lot of hardware, you don't have to build in a lot of things before you deploy the service and can essentially give it to a customer to try it out. Um, last and certainly not least, which was one of the problems we had with ChaCha was you don't have to brew everything yourself. You can use the existing infrastructure from AWS to manage things like scaling your system up, uh, controlling access to the API, monitoring and analytics, and version management of your API. In addition to that, they have a built-in tool set which allows you to generate an SDK for your various target customers. Um, and one more consideration is if you have an existing API that you've already written and exposed to customers, you can port that over uh, onto AWS easily using API Gateway. So what is API Gateway? API Gateway is a backplane in the cloud. So it allows you to connect not only AWS services, but uh, any service that you, any uh, resource that you may have created. For example, we could take the, um, we could take the CrowdPixie backend video server and connect that through the API gateway to allow uh, users to uh, do their own uh, app, which would have the same functionality as our uh, CrowdPixie director app without having to build everything over again. Um, API developers must be an IAM user in the account that owns the API. So here in a few seconds, we'll open up the actual uh, API gateway, and uh, you can see how easy it is to build one. Uh, on the other hand, your app developers in general do not need to be uh, a user in your AWS account. So you can have a remote team in Poland or Russia or wherever you like who's really just building to the SDK that you've produced, and they can hit your API. You don't have to worry about security. You don't have to worry about what they may do with the API. Um, <clears throat> an API is defined by two things, resources and methods. It looks very much like um, if any of you have built uh, web apps using a framework like Flask or Django, uh, the API looks pretty much the same as uh, a web framework uh, would look to the external world. So now, if everything goes properly, should be able to open up. So this is what the API uh, gateway looks like when you first get started. So the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to create an API. In this case, just to make things easy, uh, I'm going to import uh, the example API from the mm, demonstration. So as you can see, the API itself uh, is written in, a, uh, in Swagger so that if you have files you've already created and you just want to port something new over to AWS that you're running maybe on Azure or someplace else, you can do that comparatively easily. So now we're going to go ahead and say import that. And now we've created an API. And this API happens to be pretty simple. Um, it's a, I'm not used to navigating on the laptop, sorry. Um, it's basically a pet store where you can create uh, pets in the pet store. You can add pricing to them. You can look at what your inventory looks like. Um, really just uses some simple back-end uh, DynamoDB instances to store the data, uh, allows the user to uh, log in and see what's going on with his, uh, with his pet store. So one thing that you'll also notice is that there's lots of help. So when you first get started, uh, you may want to uh, keep a lot of these messages on because it'll tell you what you're doing. It always helps me anyway. 
So here are the endpoints that, uh, that you have in this particular API. Pets, and then you can, and you can see there's a get method, options method, post method. And likewise, you can uh, get a specific pet uh, by sending in the ID of that pet. So if we look at one of the individual resources and methods, this is what the API looks like internally. As you can see, the, this is the client-facing side, and this is the side that goes out to whatever other things are on the back side of the backplane. So there are four main things that you can do. You have the method request, which basically looks at the front end of the HTTP request that you received and allows you to do, you can say what type of query strings are allowed. You can decide whether, um, uh, whether the API key is necessary in order to be able to access that particular resource. Um, in addition to that, you can you can see that this particular um, this particular API has a pre-assigned address from AWS. If you decide that you want to deploy at a at a specific predetermined API or predetermined URL, you can set up your own uh, URL, or you can set up a fixed uh, IP address using AWS. So on the back end then we have what we call an integration request. An integration request allows you to take whatever the user has sent to you from your HTTP request and format that. For example, uh, if you're going to talk to something that is expecting a, a JSON request, you can take the information of the incoming request, turn it into a JSON string, and have that stored in the database. So here's a... Just open up the help here. Gives you a pretty good idea of how it works. Now, of course, that really doesn't do anything until you get some data back and send it back to your user. So then on the, on the incoming side from the resource that you're addressing, then you can reformat whatever the resource sent you so you can detect errors, look for problems, decide what you're going to do. And then last, but certainly not least, you can decide how you're going to return that to the user. So you may send back formatted HTML, you may send back uh, a JSON that simply gets displayed in a web page that the uh, designated user is going to uh, create by himself. So then after we've created our uh, our API, the next thing to do is to deploy it. So when you get ready to deploy our API, the first thing we have to do is create a stage. So we'll just create one for this. So before I do that, I have to create a deployment. Uh, maybe we'll go back just for a moment and look at the... Uh, so in addition to the, to the resources, there's also data models that let you specify everything you want to know about each of the individual resources you're going to work with. And it, allows you to just uh, define it as a, um, as a simple flat file. So 
So this, uh, in settings, you can see, for example, um, so here you can set your custom domain name if you decide you want to create your own domain. Easily done there. API keys, you can always create new API keys if you have new users and you want to verify that they're uh, allowed to use the API, then you create an API key and send it to them. You can also control usage by the users. So if you decide you can throttle the number of requests, um, basically set the type of uh, rate of requests per second, maximum uh, number of simultaneous connections, and then also set a monthly quota for each uh, API key. See if we can get deployed here. Let me deploy. Ah, yeah.
So at this point now we've deployed the API. You can see there's lots of things we can do with it. We can uh, generate uh, an SDK. We can export it. We can also We can also go to its. Uh, we can also go to its endpoint and invoke it. So there's the API that we just generated and deployed. It tells you the different things you can do. It also uh, tells you where it's deployed. So as you can see, we have one test deployment. We could have multiple versions of that. Uh, which would have different feature sets. So what kinds of things can you do with uh, API Gateway? Basically, at this point in time, the only restriction you have is that uh, if you're on US East, you can't use Device Farm, you can't use App Discovery Service, and you can't use the Migration Hub. But other than that, you can use EC2 instances. You can use some of the newer functionalities like uh, Lex, which will allow you to create your own conversation bots. Uh, you can do image recognition. You can also use the streaming services from AWS if you want to set up streams between apps and, uh, uh, and your service. Uh, the main, uh, now, are any of you guys government? Uh, related companies. I know we had several um, uh, discussions about uh, privacy and and, H and uh, HIPAA compliance. GovCloud does not support the API gateway. I don't know if that's a security thing or what's going on there. Uh, one of the limitations is that the maximum payload size is 10 megabytes. So if you're uploading video files through the API gateway, you could potentially run into that. The other limitation is that the timeout is set to 30 seconds and cannot be changed. So if your service takes a long time to respond, then you might have trouble uh, using API Gateway to expose your service uh, to the public. So um, that's all I have for today. Any questions? Uh, I have not used it yet. Um, the SDK generation tool, uh, in principle, should be simple, but I haven't used it. Always in principle. <laughs> yes, in, in theory, theory and practice are the same. In practice, they aren't. Any other questions? Have you compared this, uh, AWS with uh, Microsoft Azure? I have not used Microsoft Azure. So um, there's different ways that you might get around the integration timeout, but um, for example, um, the integration timeout is going to kick in if you hit a resource which takes more than, so, so for example, if you're using an AWS resource, you probably won't have trouble with it, but if you're using your own EC2 instance that is processing a big data file or processing the data that was passed in, then you may want to consider either uh, setting up to simply upload that file to an S3 instance and then let your, uh, let your EC2 instance process it after, your, after it's been uploaded. That way you're not sitting around waiting for uh, a response from whatever resource you're looking at. Yes, sir. So uh, I've I've only used the con I've only used the AWS console. I haven't used a the CLI. However, um, it's equally uh, the API gateway is equally accessible using AWS CLI as well. So you're building traffic back end on this. Have you run into any problems, or has this solved any problems for you that are fairly unique? 
um, I think the, uh, so one of the problems I ran into was the restriction on the size of the payload because before um, I wasn't too concerned about the size of the video files. Um, the, other, um, the other constraint is that uh, I did have to make sure that the EC2 instance that does the back end processing was large enough and fast enough that it would respond within that 30 second time interval. However, it has saved me all the aggravation of having to worry about scaling, worry about routing, uh, you know, multiple different uh, users to that same EC2 instance. If it's just standing alone, it's obviously not going to be able to work. So I've used API Gateway to talk to Lambda functions, but never to like a server running EC2 on EC2 or anything like that. Um, but in theory, you still have to build like an API on your on your uh, EC2 server and your application, and then you just make it so that it only essentially talks to API Gateway, right? Correct. You use API Gateway to manage user access. And well, you might. For example, you might have API gateway handle. Um, uh, for example, in, in the case of the uh, CrowdPixie backend server, uh, it's basically a dedicated number cruncher that's processing video files in order to locate devices. Uh, I don't want to burden that with database functionality or user interface kinds of things. So all of those things can also be accessed through the API gateway without having to you know, bog down the uh, EC2 instance that's running the video processing part. So have you ever thought about going to a fully serverless Lambda um, I have, but uh, for what I'm doing currently with the um, back-end video processing, it uses uh, OpenCV library to do the video crunching on a, on a file, so probably not suitable for Lambda. However, if depending on what you're doing, um, Lambda functions could easily handle a lot of the routine types of things that you would expect to do and, and probably take that, mm, take that job out of the hands and of your app developers because a lot of times if you're going to mm, implement uh, AWS functionality in an app, you're importing, uh, you're importing an SDK that helps you access whatever those AWS functionalities are as essentially a standalone uh, capability. Other questions? Thank you for your time today. Appreciate it.